Friends, I hope you are ready for today's Truth Skin Care series. Because the more I do these series, the spookier they get. <laughs> hello, hello, beautiful friends. Welcome to my channel. It's Sean from Sean K Beauty. And welcome to another episode of the Truth Skin Care series. If you're new to my channel, my name is Sean. My background is microbiology and biochemistry. I bring science to beauty, and I'm also in the luxury beauty space. So today I am going to take a deep dive into the story of Estee Lauder, giving you the truth behind the brand, showing you some of the iconic bestsellers from this brand, and also a little bit about the company itself. But where the story really gets hair raising is actually about the visionary herself. So without further ado, let's get started. So hopefully you all would like, subscribe, and share. The True Skin Care series is all about you wanting to know the truth behind ingredients, brands, and products, and you leave that simply down in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram. I do Topical Tip Tuesdays also, where I give you bite-sized tips to clear your skin. You'll see that on my IGTV, as well as in my stories. So, you guys, is a lot to cover in this video and the more i do these series the spookier they get because i unfold things that i did not know before and i'm really glad that i'm doing this series because i feel like when we do back stories like this where you get to see the heart of visionaries and brands it really does either a make you not want to buy products from the brand anymore or b fall in love with the brand and want to patronize that business even more because now you know something about the visionary or i.e. the brand's codes of ethics that leverages and solidifies your decision making with, you know, buying their products. We're going to start off with Estee Lauder because not only is this motivational, it's also somewhat spooky to me. And it reminds me a lot of La Mer and... If you haven't checked out that video about the truth behind La Mer, I will leave a link to that down below. So let's get into Estee Lauder and who she was and how this brand came about and some of the things that she did that really you may not have known. So yeah, let's get started. Josephine Esther Mansour, born July 1st, 1906 in Corona, Queens, New York. Her father was Czech and her mother was Hungarian. Now, S.A. Lauder was actually the product of a second marriage. Her mother was married before she migrated to the United States and had five children. And when she came over to the United States in 1898, she remarried in 1905 to Max Menser, who happens to be S.A. Lauder's dad. And she had four additional children. So S.A. Lauder was the youngest of the nine. So. Here's the thing, friends. This is where it gets really um, unfolding in this story. Her dad, Max, ended up building a store, a hardware store below their home. He was a tailor. And what Estee Lauder would do was pretty much help her dad out in the hardware store, gift wrapping hammers and the hardwares that people would purchase. That would later influence her uh, as she, you know, went into her own line of work. Now, where it really got interesting was that she was embarrassed by her parents and her background and decided as she got older to really fabricate her story about her life and what her past looked like because she was not proud of it. She was not proud that she came from poor people who were hardworking so she would tell people that she was born into this European royal lineage um, that was just one of wealth. And that too really caused her to change her name from Josephine to Este. So this is the first chapter of the Este Lauder story. So 1914, the outbreak of World War I. Estee Lauder's uncle, John Schatz, who is a chemist by profession, moves in 
with the family and he is one that makes perfumes and lotions and he also does lipsticks etc Estee Lauder is very intrigued by this because she was always inspired to be like her mother. She would always brush her mother's hair. Her mother was absolutely gorgeous and she was intrigued by beauty. So leaving behind her helping her dad, she decided to really shadow her uncle, learning the business and how things were made, that sort of thing. And her uncle at the time would use all natural ingredients. He later ended up using a stable in the back of the family home where he would have new way lavatories where he made four specific creams now estee lauder being the apprentice at heart ended up taking these creams to high school with her and she would share it with her friends and she would give it names like the all in ones and the dr shots venice cream and all purpose creams and all of this and what ended up happening was it did something for her. It sparked that entrepreneurial mindset that she would take after she graduated and run with it. So one day, Estee Lauder went into a hair salon to get her hair done. And Florence Morris, the owner of the salon, asked her about her skin because it looked so perfect. And she talked about the creams that her uncle actually formulated. And so Florence, being very intrigued, asked her if she could bring some of the products into the salon. But where it got humiliating one day for Estee Lauder was that she had complimented a customer on their blouse and asked them where they got it from. And the customer retorted, it shouldn't matter to her because she would never be able to afford it. Now, remember I just said that Estee Lauder was already not proud of her parents being of a poor background and hence the reason why she would fabricate stories of her past. The idea of being poor or not being able to afford, I think is the spark that pushed her over the edge to become who we know this company as today. And the root of something is what makes the tree grow strong. So she promised herself that day that she was going to push herself to every single limit, perfecting and learning in the kitchen of her home with pots and pans, making these lotions and concoctions so that she could at one day in her life make so much money that she could get whatever she wanted. And this is where the story begins. So understanding that social contacts was the ticket to really growing your business, Estee Lauder embarks on this journey of reinventing herself. She starts to fabricate her past by saying she came from a European noble family. And that is the ticket that takes her to the next level of her career. In 1930, she marries Joseph Lauder with a T. And in 1933, she has her first son, which is Leonard Lauder who we know that is a huge part of Estee Lauder today. But in 1939, Estee Lauder and her husband, Joseph, they actually divorced. And this came at the sacrifice of working really hard, trying to get her company off the ground. Um, it really did put a strain on her marriage. So she divorced, moved to Miami, Florida, with her son, Leonard. Leonard comes down with the mumps in 90, 1942. Joseph Lauder gets whiff of the word. He comes down to be at his son's side and the flame is rekindled and they are remarried again. <laughs> so it didn't end with a bad ending. They ended up getting remarried. And at this time around, Joseph ends up leaving his finance job and investing solely into Estee Lauder's vision. And that's when they change their name from Lauder to Lauder. And we have the Estee Lauder company coming into play. Their first contractual agreement was with Saks Fifth Avenue where they sold $800 worth of product, which may seem nominal now, but back then that was a huge amount and a huge step for them in the right direction. Estee Lauder also wanted to um, really get women to purchasing 
perfumes because she really had a nose for uh, scents and flowers always inspired her. So curating fragrances was what she wanted to get into and she wanted women to purchase it. Now, in that time, in the 1950s, women depended on their husbands, men, to buy them perfumes. So they weren't interested in purchasing uh, perfumes on, on their own. So what she decided to do was to create a bath oil that would be fragranced so that women could purchase it. And that actually worked for her. Um, there is another story where she went into a major department store with a vial of fragrance and the department store was not interested in purchasing from her and it broke on the ground and everybody started asking where's the scent coming from where's the scent coming from and they wanted to buy this product and that's when the department store changed their mind and started um, patronizing her brand today the estee lauder company is worth 189 billion dollars they own over 28 major companies that we know of, Dr. Jart, um, Clinique, Aramis. Uh, I will leave this beautiful picture for you all to see uh, the major brands that they own. Mac, Tom Ford. I think Tom Ford has been one of their latest acquisitions. But what we know about Estee Lauder from this story, friends, is that this woman did not dream, and this is a quote from her, she did not dream about success, she worked for it. And that one moment of being in that salon and hearing someone say, you will not be able to afford this blouse, was the trigger to send this woman into high speed for her and her family. Estee Lauder today is a family-owned business. Her sons, her grandsons, her granddaughters, everybody has their hands in this brand. And they treat their employees as if they are family. And that was always very key with Estee Lauder. Also, if you didn't know, the gift with purchase, that was something that came out of Estee Lauder. When she was around, she would give you a free gift with purchase, which most companies thought at the time would leave her belly up but the antithesis ended up happening. It took her company over the edge because she ended up intriguing more people to really want to buy her products because they knew they were going to get something free with their purchase. And that still lives on today, that same philosophy. So now that you have some backstory of Estee Lauder, because everybody has a story, friends, no matter how we dress up, no matter how fancy we may look, no matter how much glorious makeup and high-end clothing we have, everybody has a story and everybody has a humble beginning. So let's get into some of the iconic products from this brand. So first up is the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Serum. I've done a deep dive into this serum on my channel. I will leave a link to that video down below if you really want to know about the Chronolux CB technology and about this serum. But if you are a smoker, I would like to plug in that this is going to be your friend for helping you to beat those free radicals from really taking a toll on your skin and increasing aging. This definitely is one for diminishing the appearance of the signs of aging. It's also great for dealing with dehydration, dryness. It's enriched with hyaluronic acid. This is definitely one that's going to help you even out your skin tone and get rid of any loss of radiance. So this is the Advanced Night Repair. All right, friends, and next up is another icon, and this is the Allure Beauty Award winner, time and time again, the Double Wear Foundation. The Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation goes nowhere. We've heard that a ton of times. This is waterproof, it is sweat resistant, it is transfer resistant, it controls oils, it's 24 hour wear. Of course, none of us are wearing foundation for 24 hours, at least I hope not. It is non-comedogenic and it's non-acnogenic and there is no fragrance in here. 
So definitely, if you're looking for something, especially during the summer and the spring months that we're in right now, that's going to give you a flawless yet natural matte look to your skin, then I definitely say you're going to fall in love with the Estee Lauder uh, Double Wear. Like I said, it's medium to full coverage, but it is very much so buildable. This next product is one of Estee Lauder's uh, best sellers, and this is the Revitalizing Supreme. I used this back in the day for a very long time. This one is enriched with moringa extract. So if you want younger looking eyes, you want to get rid of that puffiness, diminish the appearance of dark circles and wrinkles, I definitely say you will experience the miracle of moringa in this revitalizing supreme eye cream. Okay, friends, so if you've been with me for a while, you know that the Nutritious Super Pomegranate line was one that I would often use from Estee Lauder. And I'll tell you about this, friends. This is an antioxidant powerhouse. This will detoxify your skin. This cream will plump up your skin. Uh, it's just really great all around for deep hydration. It is potent with pomegranate. It also has super berry ferment in here, vitamins and minerals. That's really going to help give you that glowing skin. So if you're looking for something for deep hydration, if you're super duper dry, I would, I would recommend trying this, maybe doing some patch testing and see how you like it. So friends, I didn't want to go through all of Estee Lauder's products. But if you go on Estee Lauder's website, you will see all of their bestsellers. Also, if you sign up uh, to be an e-lister, you actually get to plug in your birthday. They give you free gifts on your birthday. They have a lot of promotions where if you spend $45, you get like, you know, sometimes, I don't know, six free gifts. It's always some perk that's going on on the Estee Lauder website. You know, I know a lot of people don't talk about Estee Lauder as much as they used to in the past, but this company still has amazing products, products that I still stand by. At least you got to see a little bit about the brand. You got to learn about who they are because our children are still running the brand and still very loyal to what family should look like but you also got to see the mystery behind the visionary of this brand, which all brands, I'm telling you friends, I'm learning more and more with this True Skin Care series that these visionaries have regular lives just like us and everybody has a story. So hopefully you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all for my next one. Ciao for now.